I'm just kind of ready for the next chapter. Caitlin Clark, WNBA Rookie of the Month, uh, packing arenas while averaging 17 and six assists. That's not enough to make the Olympic roster. Ooh. Let's go! I'm made for this. Call me babe. Ooh. Yeah, she's displaying some skill right now. That's like. And she moving fast, like it look yeah. like she don't look like it look like everybody on that court is way slower than her when yeah. she get into her stuff. Can't help but watch when she plays, where she's shooting from, the range, the confidence. I don't think I was that effective, honestly. Caitlin Clark has openly discussed her feelings about not being chosen for the USA basketball team for the Olympics. Honestly, no disappointment. Like I think it just gives you something, something to work for. Um, you know, that's a dream. You know, hopefully one day I can be there. And uh, I think it's just a little more motivation. Uh, I mean, you remember that and. Um, you know, hopefully in four years, when four years comes back around, you know, I can be there. It's clear she was overlooked, with statistical evidence supporting this. Her outstanding college performance at Iowa was disregarded, and Staley noted they only assessed her first 15 WNBA games. Putting Caitlin Clark on the U.S. women's basketball team is one of the biggest failures of basic business. Caitlin Clark wants to be on the team, but who cares? She knows that in all likelihood she didn't deserve it. She's a However, Clark's comments suggest she isn't too upset about the situation. She almost seems relieved given everything. The USA team yesterday, the roster come out. Yeah, I think uh, I'm excited for the girls that are on the team. Um, I know it's the most competitive team in the world, and I know it could have gone either way of me being on the team, me not being on the team. So, um, you know, I'm excited for them. I'm going to be rooting them on to, to win gold. Um, I, I was a kid that grew up uh, watching the Olympics. So, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun to watch. Despite the obvious snub and the stats showing she's outperformed players like Diana Torresi this season, the oversight remains significant. The vision to find your teammates defending her. You are in constant contradiction with yourself when you're guarding Caitlin Clark. She also has to sit there like she can't hear us talking about her, which is <laughs> handling wonderfully. Caitlin, proud of you on all fronts, but proud of you for handling. Caitlin Clark's exclusion from the 2024 U.S. Olympic basketball team has been a controversial and much debated topic. They're having a shockingly similar season. So points and rebounds are basically identical. Field goal percentage is identical. Caitlin has way more assists and way more turnovers to go along with it. Mm -hmm. Diana has very few assists, very few turnovers. You know, so they're, uh, Caitlin's not yet in her prime. Diana's past her prime. Diana, I think, got in because she's Diana freaking Tarazi. Meanwhile, Many fans and analysts believe her statistical performance and record-breaking college career deserved her inclusion. The number two team in the country, on senior night on our home court, you can't really script it any better. I honestly didn't realize it until everybody started going wild, and it's just cool to have so many people in the stands that, one, appreciate women's basketball, but they understand that. The team selectors ultimately decided against it in a recent interview. U.S. women's basketball coach Don Staley acknowledged that if they were picking the team today, Clark would be strongly considered due to her impressive LDNBA play this season. This suggests the selectors may have underestimated Clark's potential and growth as a rookie. When, as, a, as a committee member, you're, you're charged with putting together the best team of, of players, the best talent. Um, Caitlin is just a rookie in the WNBA, um, wasn't playing bad, but wasn't playing like she's playing now. If we had to do it all over again, the way that she's playing, um, she would be in really high consideration of making the team because she is playing head and shoulders above a lot of people shooting. The ratings for the U.S. women's basketball basketball game against Japan are a total disaster, according to NBC Sports PR. Their opening match averaged just 3.0 million viewers on USA Network and Peacock, a sharp decline from 12 years ago when the women's team drew over 11 million viewers on NBC, marking an 8 million viewer drop. In contrast, the U.S. men's basketball team attracted 10.9 million viewers across all NBC platforms during a decisive victory against Serbia. Additionally, the Women's College Basketball Championship garnered 18.9 million viewers. Clark to Steph Curry for being relatable to fans, but claims the fact that she's a straight white woman uh, plays a big role in the hype around her is not the numbers that she puts on scoreboard. Privilege. There is a thing called white privilege. There is a thing called tall privilege. And we have to acknowledge that. And so um, the part of it is... The disparity is clear. Many fans of Caitlin Clark stated they wouldn't tune in because she was not part of the team and they followed through on that sentiment. Do I need to call you the, the female version of Steph Curry or do I need to call Steph Curry the male version of Caitlin Clark? I mean, which one is it? Which one is it? Uh, I think I'll just be the female version of Steph Curry. <laughs> the current rating of 3.0 million is notably low. To put it in context, the WNBA All-Star Game managed to attract 3.44 million viewers. 
Clark, I'm sure you saw, just became the all-time scoring leader of women's college basketball. Um, I'm curious, where would you rank her amongst all-time college players, in your opinion? Ooh, that's tough because you got to win one. I feel like that college is one of those spaces where you got to win one to, for them to even have your name in the conversation. Uh, I, and it took me three years to win mine, so it was it's it's hard. But congratulations to her. I know my teammate KP was just like, yeah, that's huge. That's a lot. People are saying Clark fans are boycotting the games because she's not there. And it looks like they're serious from Canada to Saskatchewan, Canada. <laughs> That's a long walk. We drove 23 hours. Whoa, hold on a second. 2C, I'm going to guess. Let me guess. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin. Imagine seeing fans in Germany wearing an Iowa jersey. That's the kind of impact she's having, creating a new wave of excitement around women's basketball. People are talking about it more, watching more and becoming bigger fans because of her. It was pretty surreal because we were watching TV, I think the game before, and she got really close to it. I think she was like a couple of rebounds away. And I didn't think that I would actually be at the first one. It's embarrassing, really. The WNBA All-Star Game had more viewers than the Olympic game. Caitlin Clark, who is breaking viewership records in the WNBA, could have significantly influenced the ratings for the USA women's basketball game against Japan. Christine, no one's doubting Caitlin Clark will be a great WNBA player, but she's been a professional for less than a month. So is it reasonable to assume that she should be on the Olympic team? In my opinion, absolutely. If I were NBC, I'd be extremely frustrated because Clark has shown she can compete with NBA ratings for sure. There's a history there. Rebecca Lobo came right after college. Diana Taurasi on the men's side, Christian Leitner. It's often seen, Diana, as a, as a homage, as a nod to college basketball because USA Basketball is the governing body and part of their mission is growing the game. In fact, many NBA games have not attracted the same level of viewership that Clark's games have. Absolutely, and because Caitlin Clark is Caitlin Clark. No one in the history of women's basketball has ever done this in terms of TV ratings, historic from NCAA to the WNBA, and of course, the record attendance. It's all Caitlin. This situation is particularly challenging for Cheryl Reed. By overlooking Caitlin Clark, Don Staley, and the committee responsible for selecting the Olympic team likely caused NBC to lose between 5 and 10 million viewers. Do not bring the person who would bring the eyeballs to a team that has never gotten the coverage it deserves. Most male sports writers do not want to cover the women's basketball team, the most dominant, best in the world. And I know this because I've covered them at all 10 of my Olympics. Clark's remarks about her exclusion suggest that she might actually be relieved about not playing for Cheryl Reeve, which is the impression I'm getting. Indiana is not a team that's hung their hat on their defense to this point. This announcement has not been made by USA Basketball. So it'd be premature for me to have any conversations about any. Caitlin Clark, the basketball sensation, was shocked when she didn't make the Olympic team. It was a huge deal, especially given that she's the number one draft pick. Have a good time if you come and watch them. Or they made the trip up from the Metro. We love watching Caitlin Clark, and she's really fun, and all the players on the team are really fun to watch. It was those little girls. I was always begging my dad to take me to basketball games, college basketball games. No matter what it was, really, I always wanted to be around the game. Clark continues to rack up stats on the court, which will make her a record breaker. The sport of basketball, and she, what she's done for women's sports, period, it's amazing. The WNBA, the professional league, is just, it's growing amazing. Like, I just couldn't, can't believe they're selling out. and I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> go Fever! Let's go! <laughs> she's taking a break from the WNBA now. And while she's disappointed about missing the Olympics, she's channeling this into motivation for the 2028 Games in LA. Clark is already fired up about it and thinks it'll be huge. She says she's not upset about missing Paris, but has her eyes set on the next Olympics. She's using this time to rest and prepare, knowing she needs to start working hard now to make the 2028 team. You know, it's really, really special, and I don't think it's going to set in for me for quite some time. Um, I want my legacy to be the impact that I can have on young kids and the people in the state of Iowa. And I hope I brought them a lot of joy this season. I hope this team brought them a lot of joy. I understand we came up one win short, but I think we have a lot to be proud of and a lot to celebrate. Um, and I was just that young girl, so all you have to do is dream, and you can be in moment. Wouldn't you want the most popular player in the world to represent Team USA? Of course you would. Statistics show she was ahead of Diana Torresi and others at the time of selection. She wasn't just in training camp. 
She was already outperforming many players on the team when they chose to pass her up. It wasn't a matter of her being good enough. Lynn had been there, which I think she should have been. It would have been the world coming to see her. And that is the incredible swing and a miss, I believe, by USA Basketball. Plus, she's considered the greatest college player ever. Don Staley admitted they didn't consider that, and even some of basketball's biggest names have weighed in. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver said he would have liked to see Clark on the team. Phoenix Sun star Kevin Durant acknowledged the need to follow procedures, but believes Clark will undoubtedly be part of future Olympic teams. Many commentators had expressed outrage over her exclusion, arguing it represents a missed opportunity for both the player and the sport. For instance, the Los Angeles Times labeled the decision as misguided, short-sighted, and incorrect, noting that Clark's presence would have brought much-needed attention and excitement to the women's tournament. The article highlighted her record-breaking college career and impressive NBA performance as reasons she deserved a spot on the Olympic roster, especially considering the inclusion of young talents like Diana Torresi and Candace Parker in past Olympics. Similarly, Fox 13 Seattle criticized USA Basketball for what they termed a short-sighted decision suggesting Clark's exclusion was more about maintaining team chemistry than a true assessment of talent. They pointed out that Clark's statistics outshine those of previous top draft picks who made the Olympic team. Reports indicate that Clark is close to securing a lucrative endorsement deal with Nike, which could include a signature shoe, underscoring her growing popularity. Additionally, she has established partnerships with Gatorade and State Farm, further solidifying her status as a sought-after athlete for endorsements. Clark's recent historic deal with Wilson, which includes a signature collection similar to Michael Jordan's, shows brands are eager to align with her. This partnership reflects her potential as a key figure in women's basketball and her ability to draw crowds and generate interest in the sport. Overall, major brands are not only publicly supporting Caitlin Clark, but are also strategically investing in her future. As her career progresses, more companies are likely to seek partnerships with her recognizing her potential to drive engagement and visibility in women's sports. Clark's Olympic snuff has sparked controversy, but also highlighted her significance in the basketball landscape, making her an even more valuable asset for sponsors and advertisers. Clark is earning significantly more from sponsorships than most WNBA players make in an entire season. Her rapid rise to fame has led to some jealousy from players who have been grinding for years without the same level of attention and compensation. While race may not be the primary factor, some argue that Clark's whiteness and straightness in a league with many black and LGBTQ plus players adds an element of racial resentment, especially given the racial justice narrative surrounding women's sports.